event, um, I will call the meeting to order. Um, so DRB members, I believe we have enough of them here. So we will get going. Hello, everybody. All right, my name is Kate McCarthy. I'm the chair of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board, and I'm calling this meeting to order. It's May 3rd, 2021. And um, what I'll do is I'll say the names of our board members who can then unmute and introduce themselves. So um, board members are Rob Goodwin. Hello. Uh, Abby White. Hi. Abby. Joe Kiernan. Hello. Hey, Joe. Uh, Jean Leon. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Thanks for being here, Jean. Um, and we are joined and supported by Meredith Grandel, staff, our Hello. administrator. Thank you, Meredith. Great. Um, so what we'll do next is we'll go through the procedures that we have been following for our remote meetings. And for that, I will turn it over to Meredith. Okay. Uh, just an FYI, it looks like Claire Rock will be on shortly. Great. Claire is another drb member we've just gone through and all the drb members have said hi so welcome claire well we've got somebody else coming on sorry hold on a sec i got it okay. before i can do my share screen stuff okay, okay. so i'm gonna share screen um and this is really more for um, people watching from home the what's being shared on the screen, but um, especially anybody who hasn't attended a DRB meeting before. Um, this is just gonna be a little overview of our procedures here now that we're on remote meeting. Um, so for those of you who are watching from home, if you want to join the meeting, you can use this zoom link here um, and that'll bring you into the zoom video conference platform. You can also dial in at this phone number and you plug in this ID when prompted um, and that will let you join and just your phone. Um, if anybody has a problem accessing the meeting, please email me at this email address down at the bottom um, and I will do my best to help you get into the meeting. If anyone is in the Zoom platform and is having difficulties um, accessing different video conferencing features, please use the Zoom chat function for those issues. We'd like to restrict the chat function to technical issues, but it is there. Um, and if it is used, it'll get added to the public record. The Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning your video on is optional. All public testimony will be taken verbally. Um, and please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, I don't think, hold on, I'm just going to scroll down and see if we have anybody participating by phone. We don't at the moment. Um, if you are interested in speaking on a particular matter, um, and I wasn't able to check you in at the beginning, we might check with a couple of people before I hand this back over to, to the chair. But if you want to speak on a particular matter, um, please raise your hand at that time and the chair will give some guidance on how she's going to do that for the different applications. Um, and you can use, raise your hand physically if you're in the video, or you can use the raise hand button on your toolbar, your Zoom toolbar. Um, and that'll be a little raise hand button and then we'll, we'll know that you want to speak. Once the chair has recognized you, please then unmute your microphone confirm that you can be heard and provide your full name and address for the record. Um, you will then be free to provide your questions or comments and we ask you to keep them to two minutes, um, at least initially. Um, board members will have the opportunity to respond or ask questions of you um, and the applicant may have an opportunity to respond to whatever your questions or comments were. Um, the chair may grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions or comments, um, but we do ask that you, you confirm that with the chair and then when you're finished talking, please mute your microphone. Um, you will be able to provide additional input later if the chair calls on you. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. Um, if anyone is having connectivity issues, um, usually that shows because there's, there's issues with talking and it halts um, or there's slow video, try turning off your video option or closing other applications that you may have on your open on your phone or computer. Um, if anybody wants to see the documents being, 
oops, let's just slow down, being shown um, and is having problems with the share screen or looking at them over ARCA, they can use this link. Um, this is also available if you want to download the meeting packet if you're here in the Zoom call, but things are slow for you. Feel free to download that instead of the um, share screen. That especially comes into play with people who are on phones or other smaller tablets. Sometimes they have a hard time seeing what's being shown. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. And I will now hand this meeting back over to Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Meredith. Um, all right, great. Um, so Meredith, did you want to check in with any um, potential participants other than the applicants who you weren't otherwise aware of? Um, yeah, I have a Michael Reed. I'm not sure um, what matter you're on for. If you could maybe unmute and let us know. There we go. I think you should be able to hear me. Yes. Okay. No, I was just, um, I'm, a, I'm a neighbor of, a potential neighbor anyway, of Jared Cobb and the applicant and um, just uh, observing unless an issue comes up. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanks, Rosanna. Uh, I should say we're just asking you so we kind of know the, the scope of, of who might like to talk. It is absolutely acceptable to be here to listen and to ask questions if, if they come up. So yep. yeah, it just Good. helps us yep. manage and make sure that we've made sure everybody who wants to talk has a chance to talk on an application. Um, and I'm guessing that Ann Frazier and W. Frazier are both on the same application, but I don't want to assume too, too much. Thank you, Ann. Yes, Bill's in Maine, so I don't know what sort of reception he has, but yes, we're both, um, we're okay. both on the same. Okay, so, and Kate, just so you know, they're both on about the Town Hill Road application. Great. Thank you. Um, Thank you for being here, everybody. Oh, and we do have a Samuel Higgins as well. Mr. Higgins, if you could let us know what application you're interested in. Yes, I, I, I man, Lewis is proposed in the building. Thank you very much. Okay, great. I think that covers it. Um, the only other thing I will note is that this meeting is being recorded by Orca Media, um, which is standard for our meetings. Okay, so um, I'm going to move to the next agenda item, which is the approval of the agenda. So I'll take a motion to approve the agenda as printed. So moved. Motion by Rob. It's second. Second from Jean. Thank you. I'll call the roll for the approval of the agenda as printed. Rob? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jean? Yes. Claire? Yes. I vote yes. And is the Kevin who joined us, the Kevin who is also a DRB member? Uh, it is. And um, I'm having trouble getting the, uh, the video to work, but let's proceed. And I'm sorry I was a few minutes late here. No trouble, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. And um, would you like to vote on the agenda, the approval I, of the agenda? And I vote yes. Very good. Thank you. We have approved the agenda. Um, the next item is comments from the chair. And I will just note for everyone attending um, one thing about the way that we run our meetings um, during these Zoom times is that we deliberate on applications after we've taken all the evidence. Um, we, we talk about how the application meets the criteria <clears throat> in um, an executive session. And we do that in the Zoom environment in order to make better decisions. Um, it is a more expedient process and it still results in a written decision um, as soon as possible. I just always point that out because going into this executive session does not mean that there's anything good, bad or otherwise about one's application. It just is the process that we're undertaking right now. Okay, so, um, Item number six is to review and approve the meeting minutes of April 5th, which was the last time we were together. And the people eligible to vote on those minutes are myself, Kevin, Rob, and Abby. 
So is there a motion to approve the minutes as printed? So moved. Motion by Kevin. Second. Second by Abby. Okay, let's vote. Um, Kevin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Abby? Yes. And I also vote yes. So we've approved the minutes of our last meeting. <laughs> Very good. All right, thank you. Um, so we are on to the business of the evening. And so the first item is for Greenock Avenue. And the um, applicants are Caitlin Patterson and Jared Cobb. This is the review of construction of a single family home for a height waiver. So the way we'll go about this, um, just so you know what to expect, is um, I will swear you in. Um, we'll get an overview of the project from Meredith and then from, um, from Jared. And then um, I do want to remember, and I'll just ask it right now, before we get, get into it, did any board members visit the site? You can just raise your hand if you're a board member who visited the site. No? Okay. If you had, we'd put it in the record, and that's fine. So um, we'll start with the swearing in. So Jared, if you wouldn't mind raising your right hand. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. So I'll turn to Meredith for a quick overview of the project. Um, so I'm going to try and stick to very basics and then the um, procedural matters on this. Um, so as Kate said, this is an application to build a single family home on a vacant parcel. Um, and, hmm, sorry, I think I may have, huh, I've kept the wrong picture in the staff report. Sorry about that. Um, sorry. and the reason that this is coming before the development review board is because they're asking for a height waiver. They're asking to build a house that's taller than would normally be allowed, um, at least administratively, right? So this waiver process is in there. So the board can look at differing factors to determine whether or not something that is technically higher than 35 feet tall should be allowed in this particular instance. Um, and, you know, as you look through the staff report, there are a few different areas in red. Some of them are places where, um, you know, we may not have had 100% information. It doesn't mean that it's something that would have triggered DRB review. It's just that there's been back and forth with Department of Public Works in many cases where we didn't necessarily have all of that information. Um, but we've gotten, when we're ready for it, um, for those Department of Public Works holes, there has been some additional um, information from them. So I'm prepared to read that into the record when we're ready for it. Sounds great. It, it makes sense okay. to summarize. Sure. Yeah. So I'll turn, I'll turn to Jared and um, Jared, if you'd just like to summarize your project and, and briefly what you're asking for, um, that would help us get oriented. And what we'll do after that is we'll go through the staff report and, and take a look at those items where there's a little more discussion needed um, so that the board can make sure that all the requirements of the zoning are met. Um, but I'll turn it over to you for now. Okay, great. This is my first rodeo. So um, feel free to ask Welcome. questions. Um, yes, uh, my wife, Caitlin Patterson and I, we live in Montpelier now and we purchased the, the land on Greenock Ave, uh, last September. Um, we've spent a lot of time on the land. We have two, two young boys just kind of orienting ourselves and figuring out what we want to build. Uh, we're working with an architect, um, to design the house and we feel like we've designed a house that fits in with the character of the neighborhood. It's a two-story house. Um, and it's oriented with um, basically the skinny side of the house facing Greenock Ave and the broad side of the house facing south towards the land to maximize solar access and energy efficiency. Um, the side of the house that faces the street is 33 feet to the peak and the land slopes um, back away from the street, uh, basically in, in any location where you could build a house on the lot. Um, so as a result of that, the average height of the hope, uh, house um, measured to the average grade is 37 feet. So we're, we're, we're requesting a two foot um, waiver um, over the 35 feet threshold. Uh, 
yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, standard two-story house <laughs> that we'd like to build. Okay. Kate, your video is freezing. Oops. Oh, fluid. Okay. I'm going to go off video. Um, I should call in on the phone. Um, I don't know. Try, try talking for a minute, Kate. Oh. I think she said she's going to try and call in on the phone. Let's just sit tight. Yeah, the uh, okay. all the work on the eat on the fiber lines here in Montpelier, I think, has been occasionally screwing people up. It's about as zip ties and like plastic I found from my house from the fiber work. It's pretty pretty. <laughs> pretty up, pretty up day came at a good time, you know, it's like plastic everywhere. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Kate. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes Kate, you're coming in uh, clear. Loud and clear. All right. I'm sorry for the delay. We were, things were just getting good. Um, all right. Shall we continue? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you all. So um, what we'll do, like I said at the outset, um, is we'll just walk through those areas um, on which there are some questions and the the main ones I believe are the height waiver, a little bit on steep slopes in case there are public works comments, a um, little bit on stormwater management and a question about the driveway surface. So we'll, we'll hit those highlights and then if, if DRB members or neighbors have any questions about some of the other standards, we can go through those. But we'll, we'll focus our time on the things that require some discussion. So I'm using the staff report as the guide and pages three and four and five are where we talk about the height waiver. So as we heard, the average height of the building is 37 feet, but it's 33 at the front to the peak, and it's 41 at the back, I think. Did I just 41 high in, in the rear because of a walkout basement design. Right. So, um, okay. So DRB members, it's, it's our job. Um, the, the rule says there's a, we're requesting a waiver, there's a request for a waiver of the height maximum. The waiver provision says we can do no more than high five feet as a waiver. Um, and the things that we need to take into account are that this shall not authorize, alter the essential character of the neighborhood, substantially or permanently impair the lawful use or development of adjacent property, reduce access to renewable energy resources, or be detrimental to the public welfare. Um, and the proposed development uh, is beneficial or necessary for the continued reasonable use of the property. So these are the waiver criteria. And I wonder if any um, DRB members want to ask about or comment or reflect on, on how well, how they feel the project meets these criteria. I guess I'll, I'll make a com I'll make a comment here. I think that uh, the um, you know the arguments put forward in the application about solar access and energy efficient design are uh, sort of like very appealing to consider uh, approval of this. Um, I think that they're good grounds for uh, you know for for this waiver, um, and it's very well founded. Uh, and, and I would add to that that uh, uh, the topography of the site uh, really drives the request. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I observed that the um, as the the way that the building faces the street is consistent with the character of the neighborhood, um, and the height as it faces the street is is visually um, aligned with 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 other things that are going on there. 
Okay, Claire. Uh, thank you, Kate. Um, I had a question about whether um, an alternative design that met the regulation was pursued, and and what was what was the rationale to why the building could not be built within the regulation. Yeah, that's a <clears throat> good question. Um, we we haven't pursued an alternative design. Um, we, we feel like the house, we're, we're really focused on this house fitting in with the character of the neighborhood. We're designing it in a way so that it <clears throat> will have minimal impact on the land and the materials that we're using to build it. So we, we haven't considered an alternative design because we, we just feel like it's, it's a pretty standard two-story house. Um, so it's a good question. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Gary. So I wanna um, look at the waiver criterion that is the proposed development is beneficial or necessary for the continued reasonable use of the property. Um, we heard about the site specific constraints in order to put a house here. Um, are there any questions from DRB members about that criterion? Okay. Um, I'm looking at the staff report to make sure that we that we talk about this. Um, so the 37 foot average constitutes a two foot waiver request. The maximum height is 41 feet, which is a six foot waiver request, which is above what we are authorized to give. Um, in this case, Meredith, could you could you tell me about averages versus basements versus can can you tell me a little bit about how we might consider this? So, um, in the regulations, um, when it hold on one second, and I think I put this in the staff report, but I want to make sure I'm looking at the original. Thank you. This is the part of the meeting where I put Meredith on the spot. <laughs> I always like to go back to the original in case I made a mistake in the staff report. Um, so, height of buildings is measured as the vertical distance from the highest point of the structure to the average of the highest and lowest points where the exterior wall meets the finished grade. So even though, I mean, you have a 33 foot height in the front and a 41 foot in the back, the height of the structure for purposes of measuring the max height under our regulations right now is the 37 feet that's what you're getting a waiver to. So it's a two foot waiver. It's not a six okay. foot. Okay, great. Thank you for correcting that. I What I said could have left the impression that we were asking for a six foot, wa foot waiver right. and we are not. Right, uh, thanks for that clarification, Meredith. This is Scott. Um, so really all we're talking about is a two foot, a two foot variance um, based upon the design as submitted. So we're well within our authority to uh, to entertain that. Yep. And for anybody okay. watching from home, the reference is 3002H5. Right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do um, DRB members have any further questions about the, the height waiver? Well, I just uh, just one question. So the way I look at the plans, it appears that the existing grades of the ground will be preserved. Is that correct? So that the measurement is, I mean, it, it, the regulations read as measured from finished grade, meaning after construction. So and it doesn't appear you have a grading plan. So that are you changing the to? <laughs> are you doing any grading on the site? That's my question. <laughs> Um, we, we do, we did work with, uh, Grenier engineering and Don Marsh. Um, and we, we do have a slope plan and grading plan and all of those things. Um, uh, but no, we don't, uh, we aren't making any significant changes to the topography of the land. Um, I think it's still a little bit TBD based on what we uncover when we dig for the foundation, but, um, the house will, will pretty much sit on the land as, as the land is. Yeah, Rob, if you go into the what's labeled as a slope analysis plan 
or even the um, the overall site plan, they do show some of the proposed grade lines, elevation lines versus what's existing. Yeah. So there is some discussion there, or some 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 points. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm going to consider that a segue, Rob, into the next section um, for discussion, which is the steep slope section. Um, so what we're seeing here is there. First, I'll ask: Are there any are there any comments received from Public Works about this? Yes. Okay. Um, and sticking to just the steep slopes. Um, the comments from, and this is from Kurt Modica, who's the deputy director of the department, um, said that the steep slopes in this location are fairly minimal, and there are not any concerns with this as long as silt fence and other stormwater erosion control best management practices are constructed and maintained appropriately. And he has some other comments on those points as well. But. Okay. Good. All right. Um, so moving on to steep slopes, that was really the only highlight in the staff report as far as what needs needs to be considered. There's a small amount of land. Um, can folks still hear me all right? Yes. Great, okay. Um, so disturbance of let's say 5,791 square feet of land over 15% and about 2,700 square feet of land over 20%. Um, and those are both under our threshold. Is that right, Meredith? Correct. Okay. At least under, right. Any under questions? thresholds for the um, board to have to make that decision. Great. Okay. Um, while we're there then, any questions from board members about the slopes on the site? No. I apologize for my internet. It's one of those nights. All right. So what I'd like to do um, is move on to page eight of the staff report and section 3008 and section 3009, erosion control and stormwater management, just to check and see if there are any public works comments on those, Meredith. Yes. Um, so four of these, it's a bit combined in the comments from Kurt. Um, that, so I'm just going to read it verbatim at this point because I couldn't transfer okay. around. The only drainage feature shown on the plan is a short swale that would eventually drain into a wetland area and therefore not likely to adversely impact adjoining property owners. Footing and roof drain discharge points should be indicated on the site plan. So that's something that, end quotes, that's something that could be put on to a final site plan prior to permit issuance. Um, okay, so the next paragraph from Kurt is the silt barrier indicated on the erosion control plan should be extended to cover all potentially impacted areas downstream of the disturbed limits. This barrier needs to be extended to both the north and the south along the western board border of the limits of disturbance. Disturbed areas should be stabilized with seed and mulch within seven days of final grading in accordance with the Vermont Low Risk Site Handbook for Erosion Prevention and Sediment Control. This is particularly important in the area abutting the wetland buffer zone. Period, end quote. Okay, okay, thank you. So, um, Jared, based on the fact that you're working with an engineering firm, I assume that those site standards for stormwater control would be, would be um, followed. Would you be open to a condition um, requiring the extension of that silt fence to be demonstrated on the final plan. Um, and certainly your engineer can talk with um, with Kurt or Meredith. Yeah, I, I think that's no problem. Uh, once we heard comments from Kurt today, <clears throat> um, we, we talked to our engineer, Don, and he's, he's already putting together a new site plan um, to address the uh, questions around drainage and the um, silt barrier. Great. And just for the board's due diligence, um, board members, are you interested in knowing more about the footing and roof drain discharge points? Would that be helpful to any of you in your deliberations? 
Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'd be interested in knowing where those are where those are located and where they drain to, please, Jared, if you could easily describe that. And if, if um if it would be helpful, we could ask Meredith to pull up the site plan for both to see. Sorry, did you want me to, are folks pulling up the site plan? I didn't know I, I can much. do it. Okay. Oh, right, thanks. Thanks. Does this one work for you, Jared? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I can't speak to, like, um, this is why we're working with an engineer. We're, we're um, <laughs> uh, I assume that he is going to follow all, all the city requirements for drainage. Um, it's not, not really something that I, know much about but uh anything that the city wants us to do with drainage from the roof um we will we will make sure we do okay okay so um would you be open to a condition similar to the previous one that those final well it sounds like you said don's already working that up for you yeah yeah no problem great great and i recognize you just got that information today from from uh, public work so wasn't meant to be a trick question uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for taking a look. Okay, great. Thanks, Meredith. Um, all right. Um, so are there any other questions from board members about stormwater or erosion? All right. So um, I guess the last question that we just want to check in with you on is um the driveway surface um what are you gonna cover the driveway with um gravel um yeah uh again well we're we're following I, f I forget the actual um like state kind of uh regulation but we're, we're it, it'll be a standard driveway that will have gravel on the top of it Thanks. That helps helps us know gravel versus dirt versus pavement versus. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of laughing because we're like in in the midst of like designing rooms and things like that, and the driveway is like the kind of one of the last things we're thinking about. But right. yes, I, I bet it's useful, but not as much fun as some of the other parts. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm looking. Uh, Meredith, are there any other comments from Public Works that we should be considering? Yes. Um, so there was a separate comment from Public Works about um, the driveway and access that just said that the maximum width of a residential driveway is 24 feet, whereas the plan currently shows a width of 28 feet. So this is, again, one of those final details to be worked out, I would think, on the final site plan um, that we would get prior to permit issuance, if Jared is good with that smaller, that narrower driveway. And that would be you know, that's the sort of the mouth of the driveway. So it can widen out a little bit further in for the parking area. Yeah, that <clears throat> that won't be a problem. We um, we emailed with Kurt today and he he's already good with with the um, plan that our architect sent him. So okay. uh, yeah, that, that's not a problem at all. Well, thanks everybody for being in communication with one another. Um, okay, um, um, board member. Yeah, Meredith, go ahead. All right, and there's one other thing that came through from one other comment that came through from Kurt on a different matter. Okay. Um, so the in the plans, the water service is noted as one and a quarter inch. DPW standard is one inch type K copper. And as part of the DPW water connection permit, justification of the larger line size needs to be provided. Um, also, sewer manhole and pump station details will be needed for the Department of Public Works sewer connection permit. So those are things, that's end quote, those are things that DPW will need to work out before it issues its permits, but I wanted to make sure it was on the record here in this discussion. Um, probably it wouldn't hurt to have, if the final site plan has those, that um, water service line on it, to have that either corrected or if they're going to still go for the one and a quarter inch, just that Jared knows that he'll need to justify that for the DPW before he gets their connection permit. Okay, so 
So what that ensures is that whatever is on the DPW connection permit is consistent with what is on the site plan or vice versa. Okay. All right. Yeah, Claire. I had just a, a question on one of the comments that were made about the driveway surface. Um, the, the zoning regulations don't specify a particular surface, correct? And is a surface okay. a requirement of the access permit? Um, there, there isn't a particular surface requirement. It's just that the sort of the category of surface, it needs to be a firm surface. Um, because we're not talking a large parking lot, asphalt isn't necessary. And you know something that's impermeable is supported and encouraged if possible. Um, but on the other hand, impermeable, I'm sorry, not impermeable, pervious pavers and pervious gravel systems are definitely, I think, more costly. So um, it's not something where the, the regs require a particular surface. Um, especially here where we're not butting up against the coverage requirements. Thank you. Yep, thanks Claire, that's a good question. Um, all right, any other questions from DRB members? Okay, and um, Michael Reed, is there anything that is outstanding for you? Um, we had raised one concern uh, with Jared um, that uh, because of the uh, uh, tall structure um, and the fact that uh, I believe he's planning a, a metal roof and that the roof uh, would be oriented uh, toward us um, because of the, the, the orientation of the building relative to the street, um, that um, wanted to make sure that uh, the uh, the color of the roof was going to be something that would blend in some natural darkish tone. And uh, Jared had uh, um, indicated that they planned something like a, a dark gray or green or brown or something like that, which would be fine. Um, we just didn't want to see a, a, a galvanized uh, silver roof um, that's going to be somewhat above the, uh, the, the, uh, the height restriction. Um, uh, glaring at us. On, okay. Yeah. So. Well, good. Good. Glad you had that conversation and got confirmation of color and the and the effect it would have. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. And I and I I will add that we we reached out to the abutting um, property owners and answered a bunch of questions over email and in leading up to this meeting and um, everybody's been really nice and Mike that was a those. An important question. I would want to know that too. Yes, and thank you for reaching out. To, he gave us quite a bit of information. Great, great. Thank you all. All right. Um, any last questions from board members? All right. Um, if I'm waiting a little longer than usual, it's because I'm all audio tonight. Uh, my video is frozen, um, but I can hear you. So um, it's going to be a matter of piping up rather than raising hands, I think, for the rest of the meeting until I can go into the kitchen um, instead of this office. So, all right, great. So um, as I mentioned, can you folks, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, we will take our deliberation um, into executive session just as a stand, as a as a matter of practice during Zoom. So, um, at this point, I will accept a motion to close the public portion of the hearing on this application, and and consider it an executive session when this meeting is adjourned. <laughs> That was a funky motion, but I think that's the right idea. That's, uh, that's do, I, that, do I have a motion? That is definitely the right idea, and I will, I will make that motion. Thank you, Kevin. Is there a second? Second. 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 Second, second from Jean. By Jean. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I will call the roll. Uh, Rob. Yes. Abby. Yes. Joe. Yes. Jean? Yes. Claire? Yes. Kevin? Yes. 
And I also vote yes. The motion passes unanimously, so we will deliberate an executive session at the conclusion of this meeting and then get a written decision out as soon as possible. But thank you very much for being here. Thanks for everyone who had, had questions and, um, and told us about this project. Um, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting if you'd like or to do other things uh, with your evening. But thank you. And thank you, Michael, for coming as well. All right. So I'm going to switch my files and we're going to move on to the next application. Uh, which is for Town Hill Road, and Matthew Lewis is here for that. Like I said, just pulling up my files here. Um, great. Matt, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Um, so we're going to take a very similar approach to this one as we took to the last one. So I'll swear you in. We'll get an overview of the project from Meredith and then from yourself. Um, and then we'll look at the, the sort of the highlights within the staff report of areas that merit discussion. And in this application, those include um, steep slopes, stormwater, a little bit about driveway spacing, and then we will take a look at the special use standards for accessory dwelling units. Um, I, I note that we've got some neighbors here to participate. Thanks for being here as well. And I think what I'd like to do before um, we get going is just get a very, very quick sense from neighbors on if there are specific issues they're here to hear about or if it's just general listening. And that will help me know how to um, how to how to pull those comments in. Um, so tell you what, I will I will ask that question after we get the overview of the project. OK. Um, so what I'll do first is I'll swear you in, Matt. So um, if you could please raise your right hand. Um, Either one. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Great. Thank you. All right. So I'll turn to Meredith for a brief overview of the project. Uh, thank you. So um, similar to the prior project, this is the building of a home on a currently vacant lot. In this instance, it is a single family home plus an accessory dwelling unit. Um, and here, we don't have a height waiver, we have some slopes involved. Um, and the, the house itself is actually not being built on steep slopes. Most of the, the steepest slopes involved here and what really sent this to the, to the Development Review Board um, is the slopes along actually the ditch that is going to be reworked and some slopes near where the driveway goes up and behind and it's sort of a two part driveway to provide one level living for the accessory dwelling unit. Um, and, you know, there are some questions on other areas, but it's really um, the, the steep slopes are really the biggest question, they do link into some of the questions about stormwater that are in here. Um, and as Kate said, the other thing in here that the board needs to look at is um, driveway spacing, because in this instance, the proposed driveway location does not mean meet the zoning standard spacing requirements. Okay. Great. Okay. So that's snapshot. So I'll turn now to the applicant. Um, if you'd like to give us a little bit of an overview of, of what your work, what your project involves. Sure. Um, if you're interested, I'd be happy to share a visual representation of the house on screen. Sure. Yes, um, that'd be great. Sure. <clears throat> I will do my best here. So. And you'll have to forgive me, unlike um, our previous applicant, um, we don't have the luxury of having the budget to afford an architect. So I was appointed the architect, having some background in design and a uh, degree in engineering. So this is the boundary line with uh, 100 and, sorry, 120, right? Um, and then 80 Town Hill Road is over here. It doesn't show the pine trees. Those are here against that side. Um, and please be conscious color schemes are not 
as you can see, this is like work in progress. So color schemes are obviously right now looking at what's underneath. So no siding on the house. Um, the rationale for having the house built like this is um, the intention is to have my parents living in the house. Um, they're at an age where they no longer, uh, they have mobility issues. And so we wanted to provide a living space that was accessible to them as well as other family members. We have a family member who has MS and we'd like to be able to have them all together for holidays. And after a fruitless search last summer, trying to find a house for sale in Montpelier, um, which is where everybody wanted to live, um, we decided to purchase this lot and I started working on the design. So this has been work in progress for uh, many months. Um, the design itself is intended to take advantage of solar gain as much as possible. Uh, we are trying to adhere to the strictest um, requirements for um, efficiency of Vermont. Uh, we don't know if we'll be able to get net zero because we don't know if there will be solar, we'll be able to get solar pa panels on these because of the, the trees that are um, bordering the property. Um, but if, um, if we are able to have a conversation about those trees, we might be able to get some solar panels up and um, ideally uh, the house would produce as much energy as it consumes. So that, that, that was the original goal. Um, so I, I think I've said enough about the house. I could go on for quite a while. <laughs> um, I think the issues at hand really are, are around the slopes and the, um, the storm water one of the things that we decided to do, so this is a, a building plan, not um, from the engineer, but one I was working on um, using topography put together by some surveyors, um, American survey, they, they did the points. Um, and you can see this is the area I think of concern is some of the slopes that get created here mm -hmm. in order to create this driveway that allows that single level access to the rear of the building. Um, we do plan to use a pervious gravel driveway. So that is, um, you know, first it gets graded, then you get uh, a subgrade underneath of there that has your standard, um, standard, you know, compacted gravel. And then on top of that, you put a uh, one and a half inch, um, one and a six, a uh, six inch thick layer of one and a half inch gravel. And then there's a, a plastic grid that goes over that and then pea gravel goes and fills the voids in the grid. That plastic grid is um, secured to the subgrade with uh, steel rods. So that's oh. the hope is to mitigate some of this, the flow, the natural, I mean, I've been up there a few times this spring and there's, you know, a lot of drainage that comes off of, uh, you know, there's a swale here and then there's kind of a natural drainage where the, the sewer line is, but then there's also drainage that comes off the property up here and ends up entering this um, and kind of creates a pool right here now. And the idea is to try to, you know, have that still exist to, to try to minimize the amount of water that comes through the entire site. And then anything that gets across here, we want to intercept it from going to 80 Town Hill by using this pervious gravel driveway. And what that should do is direct the flow. It should first retain a lot um, of water itself. And then if we do get a significant stormwater uh, event, then it would direct it into um, the, the drainage here next to Town Hill Road. Um, I did note there was a question on the previous application about uh, foundation drains. I just show them here. I'm gonna have them added by Don Grenier to his drawing package because He's, a, he's got a PE stamp, I don't, so his word carries a lot more weight. But this is basically where, where they were. The, the, the way the building footprint is, um, this is a slab foundation up here, then there's a full basement here that leads out into the garage. Um, mm -hmm. Those perimeter drains basically go all the way around. There's a foundation drain that goes all the way around and then terminates here and here. And those would be directed down towards the, the other side of the driveway here and here so that any any drainage would end up in the ditch. Um, and then as far as the actual, uh, as far as drainage from the roof line, um, the, the gutters, so gutters on the accessory dwelling unit would land here in this area and then would 
intersect with the pervious gravel driveway for both sides here and here. And then gutters on the building itself, um, the front of the building actually captures most of the flow. I don't know if you could see looking at the drawing, but there's more to the front of the house than there is to the side of the house. So if I, I don't know if I could do this and share screen at the same time, it's kind of hard to get around with this thing, but if I showed you a profile view, there's more roof surface on the north face, I'm sorry, the south face of the house than there is on the north face. Um, mm -hmm. I would have to play with it for a little bit to, to show you exactly how it is, but um, you can kind of get an idea, maybe looking at the yeah. top of it. Yeah, and are we looking at the side that has more roof space? Yes, exactly. This is the okay. south side and this is Town Hill Road here. So the idea is that the gutter would drain off of this edge and then land in this corner and then would follow the slopes here. Um, okay. And this, the idea here is to have, I don't know if you would call it a rain garden, but to plant some lower growing bushes, um, you know, lilacs, that kind of thing. Something that would help with absorbing the flow from the roof. Um, so that it doesn't end up on the pervious asphalt driveway here. So in a major event, a major water event, a uh, uh, severe uh, thunderstorm or something to that effect. So the um, uh, your rain garden fills up, your uh, driveway scheme fills up. How is the water diverted to the city stormwater? Yeah, so this, yeah, so it, it follows the edge of Town Hill Road here, and then there's a, the adjacent property, it's not shown here, um, has another um, culvert. So there's a culvert that runs underneath the driveway here. I think it's probably a little bit easier to see on Don's drawing. So the culvert, the, the, this is the natural flow today of the the water. So it really wouldn't- Coming off the site there, yes. Exactly, so right. it just it comes off the site, flows down, this way and then ends up in the adjacent culvert, which is on their driveways right here on 80, and then continues down to uh, Meredith, help me remember the name of the stream that's over there. Is it Blanchard? Blanchard Brook, that's right, thank you. Um, so it goes under Easy Street and then it lands in Blanchard Brook. Mm -hmm. And when you're, when people are ready, I do have some comments um, from Department of Public Works on this matter. Okay, right. let's let's do those comments from DPW, and then I will I will keep my promise of um, making sure we hear from um, from neighbors about the issues they are curious about. I suspect stormwater might be among them, so I want to round that out with a Public Works comment. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I thought for a second maybe I was looking at the wrong. Um, <laughs> the wrong comments because I looked really quick at what Zach Blodgett said about slopes. It was almost identical to what Kurt said about slopes on the prior application. So I was double checking. Um, so for stormwater and erosion control here for Town Hill, these comments are from Zach Blodgett, who is one of the um, engineers for Department of Public Works. Um, one, he has some concerns about two of the different sheets, and he refers to them as 16 and 17. I'm guessing those are the page numbers from the original application. Um, he didn't give me the reference um, drawing numbers, but he says that they contain different and inconsistent information regarding existing and proposed contours. Um, and that on sheet 16, what appear to be proposed contours don't match or tie into the existing contours. It's difficult to understand exactly what exactly is being proposed for final grading. So that's one thing that they would like resolved in any final plan submitted. Um, he also said that silt fence should be placed along the bottom contours and perpendicular to the runoff. Culvert outlet will need end treatment to comply with state bridge and road standards. Construction should comply with the state of Vermont low risk erosion handbook um, that um, I think is one of the things that is just pulled into our erosion control standards. Stabilized construction engine entrance should be required. Ditching may be required to connect the newly installed culvert to the downstream driveway culvert. Ditching would be respons the responsibility of the owner slash contractor. Um, Zach has a question about how will the water that goes through the pervious driveway be conveyed in the stormwater system? Once the water infiltrates the driveway, how will it be managed? 
the runoff should stay within the property and not adversely impact the neighboring property. That's end of quote. I think we heard some um, discussion on that already, but okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if with a you know revised details if DPW might have some further back and forth on that or want additional items in the site plan. So, again, as we've discussed before, that might be a condition of approval. Yeah, I think probably the best thing to do to resolve the the questions. Um, the drawings that I provided in the, the site plan that I developed um, was guidance that I provided to Don. Um, Don's drawings are the um, the site plan of record. So what I think the easiest way to manage this is to remove any site plans that I might have um, provided as part of the application to prevent any confusion. I, th okay. I think that's what's going on and just make sure that any details that I might have had that are missing from Don's plan um, make it onto his drawing package and then and then re, re, um, resubmit those. Yeah, it would be what we tend to call those a final plan. So we can always have a condition where a final plan is submitted to me as the zoning administrator before your permit gets issued, but that's up to the board to figure out that condition. Um, do board members have any questions about those um, public works comments? Yeah, I think I just wanted to highlight the, I think the inconsistencies between the, the two plans. I mean, it, it looks like what we have here is a site survey that's been submitted into the record, but then we also have a grading plan that was done by Don Marsh that's maybe not from that same in, in, you know, information. So I think that in the final plan, just a very clear depiction on like, what, you know where the information is coming from and, uh, and what's what, what what's controlling. I think you already said that, but um, that's the crux of this slopes thing and why we're here is uh, that specific an analysis uh, in, in my view. So, yeah, Can, do you mind if I speak to that just for a moment? Yeah, sure. That's Go a ahead. Really good point. Um, so, uh, American Survey um, Rob actually was the guy who shot the points. Um, I took those points and um, that's what I developed these drawings from. Um, I sent him the same, I sent Don the same point file. So even though the um, the contours, the contours come from the same data source, he's just showing two foot instead of one foot contours. Unfortunately, the software I have, I have doesn't do a really good job of being able to show um, the original grade and the proposed grade on the same drawing, which is why I'm recommending um, redacting these from the submittal, these drawings that I provided, um, because I think it's just confusing to to you <laughs> and to other members of the public. Um, so these okay. would hold. Well, let's let's get specific about what drawings we mean. Um, are they labeled Windy Wood Design LLC, Barry? Correct. Okay, so that's. Um, drawing it's labeled 100 dash B site dash existing slash proposed. Yeah, and 100 C. Um, and 100 C titled site dash erosion control and utilities. Um, Meredith, can we do that? Can we just remove those from the record? I haven't done that before. I would. I think I would feel more comfortable just making sure that there is a final plan because there are going to be, you know, some tweaks for, you know, additional, um, I, I mean, that makes I, more and, sense. Yeah. And I think that I can't remember for sure. I think a hundred C might be the only one that shows the utility line. Is that right? Yeah, so I would need to work with Don to transfer the data that's not shown on his drawings, the utility lines, um, the flow of um, the culvert he has, but the, the uh, drainage for the foundation, um, and also indicate that it is a pervious gravel, gravel drive as opposed to just gravel drive. So I think just a final packet of plans that's been maybe approved by DBW before the permit is issued would probably be the best way to 
deal with that issue. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense, and that's we will we will likely ask for that as a condition. Okay, great. So um, I I don't mean to keep putting it off. I do want to include the folks who are here to learn about this. So um, at this point, we, we've gotten a, a good overview. We've dived into the stormwater issues, um, and so I'd just like to pause and ask um, Mr. Higgins, Ms. Higgins, and um, the the Frasers as well um, if they would like. If, if they could just let us know kind of what their area of, of if they have areas with specific questions or if they're just sort of he, here to hear. So I'll go first um, with, with you, Mr. Higgins. Excuse me, Kate. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you've, uh, if we've sworn in the witnesses. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Um, I've sworn in the applicant, but not the other witnesses. So okay. let's go ahead and do that if, um, for anyone who's going to speak on the application. Um, if I could please have you raise your right hand. And even if you're just a neighbor with a comment or a question, that 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 counts. So if I could, I'm on I'm on frozen visual. So I'm going to assume that hands are raised. Um, they are. Do you solemn, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. I do. Great. Okay. Thank you, everybody. My video is on the fritz. Um, okay, so um, Mr. Higgins, and I think Mrs. Higgins is there as well. Um, would you would you like to to say a couple words about the things you have questions or concerns about? Uh, yes, the, the only issue that I had was I was disappointed to see all the trees removed, and they were removed right up to tight to the property lines, and mm -hmm. I I had no interest in removing any more trees. But Matt and I could get together and, and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that's it for me. Okay. Well well good. Thank you for being so patient to in order in order to share that. I'm um I'm I'm pleased that you're willing to have a chat um with your future neighbor and um, you know, see what might be possible and work for, for both of you. Um great. So Bill or Ann Frazier? Ann, would you like to speak first? Sure. Um, we have a 75-year-old cape that's, I think, directly across. I was a little unclear, Matt, in the drawings. I, I'm wondering if your driveway is going to be right across from our driveway. So we're concerned um, about um, drainage and flooding and runoff, and that's our biggest concern. Okay. If I could just add a couple of things. First of all, I didn't get a chance to say hi, Matt. Welcome to the neighborhood. And we are happy to see um, a house going in there. Um, and also, I just want to say for the record that I am here 100% as a neighbor. I've had zero conversations with anybody involving the city concerning this. Just someone will ask. So I want to be sure that was on the record. And um, and I think that, um, you know, Ann really said it, but We've had a couple of really strong flooding events in our in our, our area, including our neighbors really got there. Our neighbors right directly who will also are across the street. They're not here. The, uh, oh my gosh, I'm speaking on their names. The Larsons uh, got their basement wiped out and their, their garage wiped out a few years back. So, um, you know, it is a steep hill. We, we want to see his project succeed, absolutely. Um, but we definitely, we're concerned that drainage uh, doesn't come down, particularly with a, a paved driveway gushing right in. And I think a secondary concern, probably less uh, acute, is just sight distance and turning. You know, if we could have driveways nearby, but I mean, that that is less of a concern. We got, you know, we all kind of eyeball each other anyway and wave each other around uh, in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's not as big a deal, but, but definitely flooding and drainage is a huge issue, I think, just because of the, the slope and the location. So that's all I have. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thank. Thank you all for those comments. Um, this might be a good time to go back to one of the comments raised by Public Works um, regarding what happens once the we we've heard that it's not going to be a paved driveway, but a pervious driveway, so that the um, water can infiltrate. Um, Matt, could you tell us a little bit about what what happens to the water once it infiltrates? Is it expected to flow through the ground through some sort of piping system, or does the ground act as a natural sponge for the water that comes in through the pervious driveway? 
Yeah, so it, it should, that area will be fill that comes from the excavation of the, the basement and the, the attached dwelling unit. Um, so it's not going to be as compact as the glacial till that's on site. Um, so it should have some measure or some ability to absorb um, pretty significant amount of water. It, it really, if we wanted to do a hydrological analysis um, of the site and look at, um, you know, 100 year flood events, um, I suppose that would be the you know, the right approach from an engineering standpoint to look at the volume of water that, you know, would be expected to, to, to land in, in the area. And then how much is that gravel drive, like the volume required for that gravel drive to actually absorb all the flow. I, I, I can tell you just, I don't think it will absorb all of it. The, the hope is that anything that comes out of that driveway, um, it's going to, leach through the soil and then it's going to come out of the soil on that southern slope and then it's going to end up in that um in the drainage to the nearby brook um next to the road um i think you know increasing the depth of the ditch it isn't really that deep it's just kind of like rocks with a bunch of tree stumps right now um, we're gonna have the stumps removed so that'll allow us to widen the ditch to some extent um, which should allow more water to get captured um, I think the you know what I can do with the site itself is limited right there's there's water that's flowing onto the site from adjacent sites from 45 and 126 so um, you know how much of that is actually captured on the site, um, it's really hard to say, but as much as possible, we want to minimize anything, any roof flows, anything that's landing on, um, the roof of the house, we want to intercept that before it ends up, um, in the ditch. And we don't want anything going onto Town Hill Road and sheeting across. So the asphalt drive will have, um, it will go down about five inches from the crown of the road to allow the water to, to exit either side and enter the culvert and then get redirected down towards Fraser Brook. That's the intention. Um, it depends on, you know, what kind of rain event we're talking about. I mean, we, I had lived in Montpelier a few years back and we were in the middle of the woods and our basement flooded just from <laughs> the way that, that, you know, the way that the groundwater and the, the, the topography of that area was, um, so. Okay. Um, I'll turn to board members now. Um, we're, we're doing the stormwater part, so let's just keep talking about it. Um, board members, um, based on what you've heard or taking a look at page, where is it? Um, pages nine and 10 of our staff report, which is where we have erosion control and stormwater. Um, let's, let's, let's hear any DRB comments or questions about, about those criteria. Um, yeah. hey, this is Abby. I wonder if there's any okay. issues with the culvert as well. If there's any adjustment, the size of that. Okay. So that is a 15 inch culvert. It's, you know, I think um, it's the same size as the culvert that's at 80 Town Hill Road. Um, Again, we'd have to look at, you'd have to do hydrological analysis of the, the whole neighborhood really to, to know um, exactly what size culvert would be needed. Um, that would require input from DPW because um, they're the ones that probably have data on, on flows recorded at any given time. I don't know how much of that work has been done, but. I, I would just say I would encourage that to occur uh, to get the mm -hmm. DPW input on that. Uh, I live just just as for full disclosure. I live in this neighborhood neighborhood as well, and uh, uh, the uh, the uptick in uh, uh, stormwater events is is definitely real. 
And I think we need to be cautious and prepared uh, in how this comes together. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, I see that Rob is unmuted. Did you have a question as well, Rob? Yeah, I just, um, I think that, well, I think the applicant is uh, some type of engineering and uh, you know, I think familiar with the process. Um, would you, I mean, would you be amenable? Do you think it's possible to have no net increase in flow off of the property um, through a through some sort of design of, uh, you know, catchment and rain gardens and, you know, and that, and that type of thing? Is that, is that something that's possible? Um, it could be. Um, again, it's, it's been, uh, 28 years since I took my class in hydrology. So, um, <laughs> yeah, certainly I can look at, um, you know, hundred year rain events and, and see exactly how much and, and historical events and see how much, um, what, how much water is expected. Um, there's a lot of unknowns, right? So you don't know how pervious the existing glacial till is. Um, I think one of the areas where I was looking at, if you look at the proposed footprint, um, the drawing from, from, um, let me see if I can zoom out here so I can see the drawing number here, the EPSC plan and details um, that Don developed um, in that, I'll call it the southeastern corner. Um, that's where the bulk of the rainwater from the house, the, the roof is going to come off. So trying to capture that and prevent it from becoming, yeah, trying to capture that and prevent it from hitting that asphalt drive. The intention there is to try to plant, it's not going to be grass, right? We'll have bushes mm -hmm. and larger plants that will hopefully have a larger root system to help reduce flows. Um, and certainly we could, we could think about some kind of catchment right in that corner to minimize the flow off the roof. As far as the gravel drive, um, you know, that should make a pretty significant difference in the amount of runoff as it, you know, from today. I don't know if it will be less than what's currently on the site. Um, I'd have to pre do a pretty detailed analysis and I'd need Don's help for that. Um, it could take could take a few weeks to pull that together, um, and yeah, we're well, open it, to it, dig a hole soon. <laughs> sure, it, it it seems like there is interest in a little more information about stormwater, particularly in this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I hear board members asking for a full on analysis of the type you're describing, or for you to bust out those books from a few years ago <laughs> from your own classes. Um, but I wonder if at least a conversation with DPW about what they, what they know and learn about what's been going on in this neighborhood hydro hydrologically and, um, assuring that that 15 inch culvert is, is an appropriate size given changes in the, um, development and in the frequency and intensity of storms, um, yeah, which I, I know is in your interest as well. It, it is. My only concern about increasing the size of the culvert too much is if it's larger than the downstream culvert, you might mm -hmm. actually exacerbate mm -hmm. issues further okay. down. So it's it's kind of a tricky problem to solve, right? You mm -hmm. solve it on one property, it, it then becomes the neighbors. It actually could create mm -hmm. more of a problem um, because instead of restricting flow and causing ponding above the culvert, um, you're causing it to mm -hmm. overrun the downstream culvert, um, in which case you could have it spreading onto the road and it, mm -hmm. It is not. It is something that DPW needs to to address, right? I just need to talk mm -hmm. to Kurt and see what um, what he has to say, what what the recommendations are. But whatever okay. recommendation okay. he has, I'll I'll make any adjustments to the drawing as, as needed okay. and final design. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, more on that later. Um, yeah, Claire. Uh, yeah, I guess I just wanted to follow up on um, the. There's a, I don't know if it's a suggestion or it's something from the regulation that does specify that 
the Direction of Public Works can require a stormwater management plan be submitted. Um, and I was just curious, Meredith, from your communication with them, it, it doesn't sound like that's what they've asked for now, but it may be that right now they just want more clarification. I was just curious if that once if if once they got clarification on the current grades and so forth, if this would be something that they may ask for and whether the board can kind of request that that be a submittal for this application? Um, I, I don't, the way that's phrased, I'm not sure the board can require it. Um, it's, I mean, right now what DPW is wanting is more more information, more details so that they can work out, I think, the finer points of the, the how the stormwater flows. Um, and, and of course, you asked me about, hold on one second. Yeah, I mean, it's the management plans. I, I, I think that in some ways the stormwater management plan, because it's about details about culverts, ditches, brooks, all of that. Basically, in, in some ways, Zach's asking for that here because he's asking for more details. It's, it may not come to the level of a management plan as would, you know, for the 25 year storm event. Um, but they definitely are looking for more details at this point. But I don't see I don't see a place here where the board necessarily is the one who says, yes, we need this. Because whether or not you need that depends on the details on the site. And the engineers at DPW, I think, are in the best position to know if it's been fully triggered for that. But that's how I see it. Does that answer your question, Claire? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I was a little roundabout. It's a good, a good question, um, and, and thank everybody for their patience. I'd rather do this thoroughly and send, have, have clarity for, for whoever needs it than, than have to have extra meetings. So, um, all right, if, if it pleases the board, I'd like to move on from stormwater and talk about steep slopes. Does that work for board members? That's fine, Kate. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so my understanding is that when it comes to steep slopes, we're we're not talking about the movement of land to build the house and the accessory dwelling unit. We're talking about um, a little bit for the driveway to the east of uh, the west of the house, and then also a ditch, um, which I'm looking looking to identify on the map. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about what um, is is being done here that's creating steep slopes? If I could unmute yeah, myself, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to share a screen again. It's okay. I do this sure. all day. Um, <laughs> there we go. So the steep slopes are indicated in red. Um, this mm. is page 17 of the submittal. And mm -hmm. so there are really existing slopes that I think it was mentioned earlier. Um, they're existing and they're part of the, the drainage really for that site. Um, it does rise up quite steeply in the front here. Um, there's a significant amount of rock that was placed on the ups, the upside slope of that um, property um, mm -hmm. for slope stabilization. And so, you know, the intention is not to remove any of that rock or if, if it is, we would place um, rock in the ditches here and here to help stabilize and also prevent erosion. Okay. So is it the construction of the driveway that the access point that is leading to the slopes being rebuilt? Is, is that why we're reviewing this? Under steep slopes? Forgive me if I missed it in the staff report. Maybe I could look to Meredith on, on that. 
Yeah, so I mean, you have the driveway going in over what are currently steep slopes, right? And the culvert mm -hmm. going in. There's also mm -hmm. over there on the um, western side, there is some creation there of steep slopes to be able to make room for the right, correct driveway curve here, if I'm understanding this all correctly in my discussions with Matthew previously. Um, so it's really tiny areas of, and these are the 30% slopes, 30% or greater yeah. slope. Um, okay. And the way the regulations are written, when you're disturbing the steep slopes, which technically putting in the culvert and putting in the driveway is going to disturb these steep slopes, even if they're maintained okay. with the culvert. Um, and then there's a little bit of, of creation by, sh by regrading to get that driveway pushed over there. I mean, there's, there's definitely disturbing because you have your line of disturbance, the LOD line mm -hmm. over that area to regrade okay. it. So you said the steep slopes will be disturbed, but they'll be maintained by the culvert. Okay. Um, questions from board members about the steep slopes. Could we go back to um, people view, please? Screen not share. Thanks. Thank you. Now that my video is working, I want to enjoy it. Um, yeah, questions from board members about steep slopes. I mean, it's just that one spot right at the right at the uh, 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 boundary line uh, on the on the roadway. So I I don't see that as being significant. Okay. And it's less than thirty percent, correct? Um, the slopes being disturbed are over a grade of thirty percent, um, but it, I mean it's it's way less than thirty percent. So I, <laughs> for sure, yeah. So I'm going to, um, for the sake of due diligence and, and thanking you for your patience, I'm going to go through the criteria for steep slopes to make sure that we've thought through the pieces. Uh, can you uh, do unless there's something to add. Go ahead, Meredith. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, do you want to go through the criteria? Or I do have one sentence from um, DPW on slopes. Do you want that in now oh. or after? Let's do now, please. OK. So this is from, again, Zach Blodgett. The steep slopes in this location are fairly minimal, and I don't see any issues as long as silt fence and other stormwater and erosion control best manage management practices are constructed and maintained appropriately. That's the end quote. Great. Thank you. That is helpful. So I'll be brief but thorough. Um, the criteria for slopes have to do with, um, and this is to, to ensure public safety, Minimize erosion potential and flooding potential. Avoid increased cost of providing services to remote areas. That's why we ask these questions. Um, so do, does the project limit the amount of disturbance, the clearing of existing natural vegetation and impervious surface to minimize potential for erosion, stormwater runoff, flooding, and water quality impairment? I would say that as it pertains to those steep slopes, that's a yes. It does, not create, does it create slopes steeper than 30%? Um, I think that we heard there is a de minimis um, creation of slopes at the edge of the driveway. Preserve distinctive natural features and the general topography of the site. We heard that a lot of these are existing. Um, they are a ditch. They, ditches have steep slopes. Um, maintain or reduce the pre-existing rate and retain the pattern of stormwater runoff leading, leaving the property. We've, we've discussed that quite a bit. Um, I think it at least maintains the existing rate and mimics the pattern of stormwater runoff leading the property with some more discussion to be had. Produce a final grade that's compatible with the surrounding natural terrain. Create a harmonious transition between graded slopes and the natural terrain. Avoid creating continuous unbroken slopes or linear slopes. Um, these all appear to be the case by the plans. Contour graded slopes by varying the slope increment to produce a final grade that undulates both vertically and horizontally. We've seen it does and very cut and fill banks and terraces to produce a final grade um, that has visual interest and allows for naturalistic landscaping. Um, oh, there's more. Um, consider the use of retaining walls and terracing rather than cut and fill. Vary the pad elevation on sites with multiple structures, not applicable. Provide roads and driveways that follow existing contours, which we've seen. Compact building forms and multi-story buildings to minimize footprints. Split or multi-level buildings that step up or down the slope, which this design certainly does. Um, 
I've gone through those quickly. Are there any questions from board members? Okay, thank you. Um, all right, I'd like to move on to the last couple things. Um, I think we have a pretty good understanding of what we know and what we don't know about the steep slopes and the um, stormwater. So if you wouldn't mind, we're gonna move on to access and circulation and the driveway spacing. That begins on page 10 of the staff report. Um, and Meredith, what we're looking at here is they need to be 45 feet apart and they're 40 feet apart, is that it? Um, yes, so you have a situation here. So if you go to, um, you know, I'm gonna pull this up so that people who are looking from at home and might not have pulled up the staff report can see, sorry, which way am I going? I'm going up. Um, there's two nearby driveways. Okay. I'm sorry for the blurring, guys. Um, do, 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 do. So this is an estimate because we don't have the distances between the driveways on the site plan. Um, so here's one existing driveway to the west right and so i'm estimating it's probably going to be about 40 feet from that driveway it's also it's going to be just over or around 45 feet somewhere in the, the 44 45 feet from this other driveway because it's right in between the two mm -hmm. there's there's i don't see any way for a new driveway on this existing site mm -hmm. to be 45 feet or more from both of these driveways and also meet the driveway standards. Um, when you're ready, I have some comments from Department of Public Works on this issue, but the crux of it is that the board has to approve a driveway, new driveway location in this district that is less than 45 feet from other existing driveways. Okay, and we're using the waiver provision for that, is that right? Um, this actually, yeah, this is a discretionary. There are very specific um, reasons, or, you know, times when the board can approve this, but you don't, it's not a waiver per se. You don't have to use the okay. waiver criteria. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's hear the public works comments, please. Okay. So this is again from Zach Blodgett. Throat of the driveway needs to be between 12 and 24 feet in width and known dimensions are shown on the drawing. When used, when measured by the scale on the drawing, it is greater than the 24 foot maximum. So the driveway needs to be constructed per the state standards VTRANS B71. So maximum width needs to be 24 feet. Um, okay. Zach doesn't see any major issues with the proposed driveway location. While it doesn't quite meet the distance requirement, it appears to be a reasonable request for placement. It would be helpful if the site plan showed all driveways on both sides of the road on the site plan. So all of the nearby okay. adjacent driveways. Okay, um, maybe I will turn to the applicant. I'll turn to you, Matt, um, and ask, um, what's your plan for how wide the driveway will be? Is that um, decided yet? Yeah, so the original drawing, I think, when I measured it out, um, was 25 feet. And um, that was just because I was doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've narrowed that significantly. Uh, I think it's 23, um, a little under 23 to allow for two cars. And I'm concerned about vehicles getting in and out of the, the, the driveway and being able to turn around in there. So um, okay. yeah, so the final drawing will show a narrower throat to the driveway. Okay. Okay, so that will be within the, the range of what's allowable. So we've heard 23 feet. Um, thank you. That's helpful. Um, all right. Questions from, uh, I will just let you know that we're, as a board, we're allowed to, we may reduce the spacing for residential driveways based on site and street conditions, which I think is what we're looking at here. Two, when it's not physically feasible to achieve and upon the applicant obtaining an access permit from the city or state. That's applicable. So those, that's what we need to consider before we say yes or different. Um, questions from board members about driveway spacing. Yeah, Claire. Uh, 
It's a question that I have on, um, it shows on these ortho photos of Meredith is referenced and also on a couple of the site plans. There looks to be some type of right of way on the uphill side. And I was curious, does that provide an access to another property and what the status of that is? Are you looking at that, what looks like a, a channel or alley between the two, um, the, their parcel lines, I guess, and then something between them? Correct. Okay. Right. Does, does, does that mean anything on the map or is that just a mapping fluke? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Higgins is uh, trying to make a comment. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Higgins. Please. I'll, I'll have you go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that, that used to be a right of way to the upper field up that connects to Main Street. But all the property owners along that right of way bought out that right of way. So it is no longer a right of way. Hmm. The, okay. The sewer access sewer line comes down through there. But as far as mm -hmm. it being used for any other purpose, it, it, it is no longer usable. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful. Um, just yes, Meredith. Sorry. Uh, so when we pull that up on our parcel maps, it actually is linked to the city road, just to back up what Mr. Higgins said about it being part of the sewer right of way. I think it's considered mm -hmm. city right of way at this point. Okay. The sewer line. Okay. That makes sense. Great. Other questions about driveway spacing from board members? All right, very good. Um, we're gonna move on if it pleases the board. Um, why did I have that highlighted? I was going to talk about special use standards for the accessory dwelling unit, but I think it's determined that the ADU does comply with all of the requirements. Um, the accessory dwelling unit, we haven't seen as too, too many of these, so just Everybody should know it doesn't count toward density calculations. It's, it's pretty much allowable by right um, in association with a, with another home, um, even on a non-conforming parcel, which this is. So are there any questions about the ADU? No. OK. Um, all right, thanks for going through that in a very thorough way uh, altogether. Are there other questions from board members? Okay, so we've had a good conversation about stormwater. We have some, um, some questions. We have some options as a board. Um, we can continue this hearing to our next meeting, which is two weeks from now, um, pending and, and use that time period to get additional information after consultation with public works. And um, what was the other thing we were going to, there was another consultation. It's mostly consultation with public works and making sure um, about the flows if, if public works has information. The other option that we can exercise as a board is if, if the questions we have have been resolved well enough tonight and putting the answers to those questions on a final site plan would do the trick, we can close the hearing and consider this a deliberative session. But once we close the hearing, we can't take more evidence. So I'd, I'd like to ask, I'd like to have board members um, talk a little about whether, whether we need more evidence to make a decision on this um, and what that evidence would be, or whether we feel prepared to deliberate. I guess I have a, uh, I, have a, I, have a I have a question. So minus the steep slopes and the driveway spacing, if it weren't for those two issues, would this have still come before the DRB? No, I would be working out these details with the applicant and Department of Public Works because that there's a more flexible time frame for the administrative permits. Um, but once an application has come in and is technically complete, we have a set schedule for getting here to the DRB. Right. Right. Great. So I want to rephrase what Rob said because I, I think it, it, it's important. Um, every project like this one has to meet stormwater requirements. We happen to have the opportunity to be looking at them tonight because 
there are two other things going on here, one having to do with driveway spacing, one having, having to do with steep slopes. Um, so while this conversation is very valuable, I, I will note that this application is getting a little more scrutiny because of that. And these problems would be, would be solved at the administrative level um, were it not for these other also important issues. So uh, I just want to be really clear about Rob's comment. Just on my, my two cents worth on this, I, I, I do think that this is important to get the water uh, issue uh, as as nailed down as we possibly can, and if this was a, another site, we I, I might be I might be comfortable with with uh, just moving ahead with condition and doing it with with conditions. But I'm inclined to uh, want to get more DPW input uh, and continue this to the next to the next meeting, just okay. for discussion. Okay, thanks, Kevin. I have a question. Are we waiting for any DPW input on the steep slopes or the driveway spacing? Or is it just for the stormwater? I believe it's just stormwater. Is that right, Meredith? Um, well, I mean, that's if you feel like you have enough comments from them on those other two issues, then yes. I mean, I, that that's sort of your, all in a way, I would feel comfortable with getting, you know, if this were an administrative permit, I'd want a revised site plan with the modified driveway dimensions on it and make sure DPW approved that. I wouldn't ask for more on the steep slopes no. because DPWs approved that they like the information they got. Um, you know, it would, there would need to be clarity on those um, existing and proposed contours, but that has to do with the stormwater and erosion control, not the steep slopes criteria. Okay. Thank you. I, I kind of feel like the, if, if the steep slopes were a major component of the stormwater issue. I could see there being a need to kind of follow through on that, but it seems like, I guess, deferring to DPW on the stormwater issue is is very much kind of within their purview. And I don't know what I would kind of add to DPW's expertise on that component. I do think it is a very important component and feel like it should be um, you know, very much kind of considered and ensured that it is managed, uh, you know, adequately. Um, also feel like, like I mentioned, that I feel confident that that is something that can be addressed by DPW. Okay. Thank you all. Um, other board members, I see you've unmuted Abby and Jean. Abby? Yeah, this is this is difficult. It's, it's helpful for you, Rob and Kate, to kind of frame the issues before this board. Um, I'm wondering kind of what is what is lost in just continuing the hearing and allowing to hear more from DPW, including including the site plan on the, the driveway and the stormwater. It, what is you know, what is the harm in, in, in doing that? And perhaps for you, the, the harm is just a, a two week delay. <laughs> um, but to me, that does feel like the most prudent thing to do. Mm -hmm. And just so that we know what we, oh, sorry, go ahead, Jane. Oh, yeah, I just, I personally feel the same. I mean, I, I'd like to see some additional details on, on those stormwater plans and and the driveway mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are a couple things going on with driveway development. One is that the, the width of it, and I think we can probably all imagine what a narrower or wider width would look like. We're probably not needing to wait two weeks on that. Um, but when we say details on the stormwater plan, we talked about the sufficiency of the culvert what other details are folks interested in knowing? Because I want to confirm before we ask that that those that we're going to get real information that is going to help us make a decision that's better than what we can make today. 
So stormwater details that we're interested in are sufficiency of the culvert. Also the, uh, the on-site uh, flow of the water. Okay, having to do with once the water goes into the impervious surface. Or right. I mean, I mean, what we need, what we need is 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 a uh, positive uh, finding that uh, that in fact that's what it'll do. I mean, that's what the testimony from the applicant is, but we need some verification of that. And I, I'm sorry to belabor this, but are we seeking verification from the applicant's engineer? Or are we seeking verification from DPW? Um, are we? I think, Are we taking that? Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not saying it should be DP, DPW or the engineer. Uh, it, that it can come from multiple or a single a single source, but something to give us to be able to flesh out um, the water transmission as we are, have been presented with it today. Okay. Um. I think that uh, maybe what we're talking about is you know staff report is. 3009C sort of provides a description of, um, you know, the types of things we're looking for on site, which is, um, I, you know, I can, I can read it to focus things um, and that uh, this subsection also requires the best available technology be used to, among other things, minimize stormwater runoff, increase on-site infiltration, encourage natural filtration functions, stimulate natural drainage systems further, Low points and standing water should be avoided unless specifically designed. Um, not the last part, but I think that there's, you know, encouragement of some creativity here for on site drainage. Okay. So it sounds like while it while acknowledging that we've we've seen some thoughtful design here with the roof, with the rain garden on the south end of the house, recognition of the upper existing retention pond, the um, pervious surface for the driveway, we, we've heard all of that. We feel that we need additional evidence to assure that 3009B is met. Stormwater drainage shall not negatively affect adjacent property. And we want to understand better as well 3009C types of drainage systems. Uh, that, that, I'm sorry, that's it. Yes, 3009C. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's part of it. I have my finger on that one. Okay, you had your finger on it. All right. Um, okay, so maybe maybe board members are nodding. And and Joe, if I if I could put you on the spot, I just I will just do that to ask do do you have any questions or anything to add on this issue since we've heard from the others? Um, I don't have any questions for the applicant. No. Okay. You have any questions for me? I, for Meredith? I'm a little I'm a little curious what what exactly we're all looking for here. The applicant did outline where the footing drains are going to be, although it'd be nice to see them on on a set of plans. Um, but what I'm wondering is well, what really are is this just a a judgment call on our, you know, things like the the culvert size and things like that. You know, there's. I'm not sure why we want to know that. I guess is what I'm mm -hmm. saying. I, I understand that overall we want to make sure that the site doesn't impact other adjacent properties, but mm -hmm. seeing as this would not even be before the board if it wasn't for the driveways. Um, and the extremely minimal steep slopes. How would this all be taken care of if the driveways and steep slopes weren't an issue and this wasn't before the board? Mm -hmm. That that's a fair question, and we're get we're getting deep into process, but I think it's good to be transparent about why we're doing what we're doing. So um, again, thanking right. folks for their patience. I, I think that's a good and fair question. So yeah, Mayor, I, I would answer? like to I would like to just. Uh, briefly respond, Joe. Uh, I think that, you know, by the fact that it is before us, regardless of how it got got there, it then becomes our purview to look at to look at the full range of, of criterion that are that are being uh, 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 that are being analyzed here. So even though it wasn't stormwater that got us there, we can now take stormwater and, and address it. 
Okay, I understand that. Um, I guess yeah, I my question a, I was: I think it's a significant is... issue. I mean, I think we're making we make judgment calls all the time, and this is just one of those cases where, you know, personally, I feel it's appropriate. I, I agree that it's a significant issue. I think stormwater management is probably the most important part of site design. Um, what I'm wondering is if it wasn't before the board, what is the process for? There's a the permitting process I know that goes through the state and. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming there's something for the town as well. Um, do you want me to speak to that, Kate? Yes, please. Okay. So, you know, as to the state permit requirements, there's there's specific standards for that. Um, and and a single, as far as I know, a single family home on a parcel this size isn't going to trigger that. Um, that's not my area of expertise. For Stormwater here in the city, if it's not something that goes to the Development Review Board, um, if it's an administrative permit where there are changes being made to the grade or new impervious surface being added, we look at it here in the office and we coordinate with the Department of Public Works. Um, and we pretty much always wait for DPW sign off. And part of that is because um, one, they're the experts, but also they manage any city stormwater permits. The city has several stormwater, state stormwater permits um, for different areas, different neighborhoods of the city, um, often associated with streets that they have redone and that, that links all into um, mm -hmm. part of the Lake Champlain watershed. Um, so there are even instances where an application that does not require a zoning permit we still actually need to flag it for Department of Public Works if it increases um, pervious, it, sorry, impervious cover on a parcel that is associated with one of those state stormwater permits. Um, but in general, we wait for DPW sign off. Um, in this instance, we don't have it yet because they, you know, they wanted some more clarity on how stormwater is being dealt with. Um, as, as has been discussed here and, and highlighted by Kevin, the way Montpelier works, once part of an application triggers DRB review, the whole thing goes before you. I can lay out my staff report, what I would conclude based on my review of the, the provisions that would normally, you know, that don't trigger DRB review, but it, it all comes down to you. Um, and so instead of, you know, instead of basically one mind in DPW, it's seven. So it really, the whole thing is in your court, ultimately. Okay. So we so can proposal. bypass oh, the, ahead. we can bypass the normal process by approving this. Is that what you're saying? Uh, you're, I don't, I don't want to say you're bypassing the normal process because at this point I would be going to DPW to get more information because, and if DPW says, well, we can make suggestions, but the applicant needs to get an engineer to show us what what it's really going to look like. Because DPW isn't going to redraw the site for them. Yeah. Then there's some back and forth. DPW can push back on somebody saying, "Nope, you need an engineer to show me what you're doing." Um, right. It's, I... it's the same process. You're just standing in what would normally be my shoes. Okay. Big okay. shoes to fill, Meredith. That's why there's seven of us. Um, so here's here's what I'm going to propose, given given what we've heard. Um, I've, I've looked at I've, I've listened to who on the board is interested in more information and who thinks we could probably proceed. And we're about split, but as I said, there are seven of us. That's not an even number. Um, we do not have approval from DPW as as we might normally have, and we have heard from some concerns about the neighborhood at large. So I am going to propose that we do continue this hearing to a time and date certain um, in order to obtain additional information about stormwater and DPW sign off. That's not a motion, it's just an idea. It could turn into a motion if others agree. My motion to continue the hearing to allow applicants to, to provide those details. I, I just have one there, quick question for oh, the let's... applicant in that case. Um, okay, let's Matt, do that. And does... let's, Joe, let's get a second and then have discussion of the motion. Or discuss, uh, no, I'm sorry. 
process-wise. Uh, would you withdraw your motion, Gene, no, uh, in order to gather? Thank you. Joe, please go ahead. Thanks. Uh, Matt, I just wanted to ask what the two-week delay would do to your project. I'm just curious if it's no issue at all or if it is an issue. Well, um, yes, but probably not a huge issue because I won't be able to start digging holes until June anyway, because of the ability to get a hold of people. Okay. Um, I think the biggest issue for me is I'm, you know, I'm paying people for work that I'm not sure if I'm actually going to be able to do. Um, Cause I need to, you know, to, to line them up and, and get them in a schedule and get them in a block of time. And it's risky to, you know, pay somebody an upfront fee to hold their time and then not know if you're gonna actually have approval by then. I think my biggest concern is, you know, I'd scheduled them for June thinking we might be able to get a permit um, before then, or it's strong likelihood, but with another two week delay, there's risk that the time that they're scheduled to come in there now, um, I would have to tell them they can't because we don't actually have the permit. And then I have to reschedule, which would likely lead to another month delay at which point you know, we wouldn't be finished construction until probably November, um, which makes things tricky. So okay. yeah, it's 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 tight as it is. I was hoping to have all this mm -hmm. stuff done in March, but it takes time to get um, responses from DG, DPW. It takes time to get engineers to develop drawings for you. Um, I don't even know if I could get those drawings revised knowing Don's schedule in the two week time frame. And I think what I would ask the board is, uh, to be as specific as possible in exactly mm -hmm. what it is that you're looking for on the site plan that would ameliorate any kinds of concerns you have with stormwater, because it is mm -hmm. a very, very complex problem and is not something that, um, it's something you could spend a lot of time or you could take industry best practice and apply it, which is what I've generally tried to do um, is apply best practice, but a, you know, a detailed analysis is not something that would happen. It basically would shelve the project for this year in all likelihood. Okay. Matt, thanks for, for such a candid response about how this affects you um, and, and what you are doing. So, um, so backing up in my notes a little here, the, the stormwater details that we're looking for have to do with the sufficiency of the culvert, DPWs look at that. A better understanding of on-site flow of the water, though we are not asking for a full-on hydro hydrologic analysis, um, and ultimately something that would not necessarily may, may or may not need to be done with the engineer is the sign-off from DPW. And Maris, do you think DPW can can get the applicant and the board information before the next meeting? Because it's, it's also hard to receive the information at the meeting. Yeah, I I, I think they can. Okay. And I would I would okay. be pressing them for that. Okay, thank you. That, that, that would be very supportive and helpful. Um, I know they do their best. Um, all right, are there any other questions from board members? Okay, is there a motion? Gene, do you wanna make your motion again? I was, I was just reading, doing a lot of reading on this one. Yeah, um, so yes, we'll motion to continue the hearing. Okay. Um, weeks to our May 17th meeting. Correct. Okay. Is there a second? So moved. Second from Kevin. I will call the roll. Uh, Rob. Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Uh, no. Jean? Yes. Claire? No. Kevin? Yes. And I, um, I vote yes. The motion carries to table this to our next um, and continue discussion. It will be the first item on the agenda at our next meeting. 
Okay. Um, as I, I hear Matt's request um, for as much specificity as possible on what needs to go on the site plan, because there's no need to go back and do this two or three times um, to make efficient use of time. Um, so we talked about the drain footings. We talked about the driveway width. Um, and Meredith, could I rely on you to provide notes on, on other items that need to go onto the site plan? Yes, for sure. Okay. Thank you very, very much. All right, folks. Um, that concludes, um, unless there are any final, final comments or questions about what's next, that, that concludes our discussion of this, this application. And Matt, I, any last questions, I'd be happy to try and answer. I think the one part, the one comment from Department of Public Works um, relating to the footing drains are some, those are all very simple problems to solve. Um, the hardest problem to solve is um, how the drainage gets treated from the gravel drive. Uh, but I'll speak to Don and see what um, creative ideas he has and try to apply them to the drawing in a way that um, shows them accurately and shows that drainage being diverted to, um, to the ditch. Sounds great. And perhaps your answer is going to be that the soil is such that it's infiltrating. Um, I think it's just a matter of knowing a bit more about how much um, is, is going where uh, for the sake of the board, which we very much appreciate. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to the next item in our agenda is other business. Um, our next meeting is May 17th, uh, same time, 7 o'clock. Um, we'll, we'll discuss this more. And uh, Meredith, do you know if there's anything else on the agenda for that meeting? Uh, yes, there is. There's another okay. application. Okay, very good. Um, all right. Uh, any other announcements, Meredith? Um, so I want to make, um, this is really for the board, um, and something for you to think about. You don't need to discuss this now. Um, the city is considering moving towards the possibility of in-person meetings, um, looking at beginning of July, potentially, um, either the first or second meeting. Um, my understanding is that boards and committees um, may have the option of choosing whether to go fully in person or do a hybrid model um, where the board members, if they so choose, would probably be attending from home, but we would need to, by, by July, we will need to at least provide um, staffing in the council chambers itself with that open to the public to be able to come in um, and participate over Zoom. We haven't figured out all the details of how a hybrid would work. Um, or even if we go in person, there may still be options for Zoom access, given that for some people, Zoom access has made it a lot easier for them to attend hearings. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of details to work out, but it's something for the board to think about and for individual members to think about um, and feel free to, to shoot me emails with your thoughts on how, how you would feel comfortable um, starting in July, potentially, um, with okay. in-person meetings. So maybe that, that um, at our that, next... I was just going to say, thank you, Meredith. That's great news. Uh, it, it's wonderful that we're actually moving uh, into, into the next phase of, uh, of this unusual event. Yeah. So might I propose that we hear an update from Meredith at our next meeting, at the end of our next meeting, on any um, any further details about what that re reopening would look like, and then maybe put on our first June meeting an agenda item for discussion um, yes. when board members can share, if they wish, their, their preferences, and we can also invite public feedback on um, what sort of model works, um, whether the Zoom model is a is, is valuable thing to maintain in some way, because I can, I can see how it would be. Yes. Great. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn the public meeting into executive session? So moved. Motion by Abby. Second. 
Second from Joe. I will call the roll. Rob? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Jean? Yes. Claire? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And I vote yes as well. The motion passes unanimously. The meeting is adjourned. Let's reconvene in the executive session link, um, or deliberative session. I'm sorry, we call it deliberative session um, in five minutes. Oh, yes, good. Meredith. I haven't sent her on the link yet. Sorry, I got distracted. There are too many things going on today because um, I have to wait till I see who's on to send it out. So get, okay. maybe give me 10 minutes so that I can actually set up a meeting. <laughs> Yes, that, that's fine, Meredith. Ten minutes for the DRB, and thank you, everyone else who attended. Matt, thank you very much. No, thank Jared, you. Thank you. Thank you all. All righty. Have a good night. See you in 10. Bye-bye.